Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of my official Blu-ray collection. This is going to be my sixth entry in this series, and I can't believe I've already done six of these. It's truly been amazing. I remember when this shelf was built two years ago, and I remember the first two shelves were completely uh, covered, and then part of the third one was, but now we're actually down to the bottom one. I have collected so many Blu-rays over the years, and... I can't believe I've been doing it since August of 2015. Guys, I obviously love making these videos because you guys love watching them. They always get tons of views, so here I am doing it again. This is always a really long video to make and it's always long, so if it's too long because I have so many Blu-rays now, I plan on splitting this video up into two parts, but if I can get the runtime down short enough, then I'll just make it one video. But guys, I'm gonna try to go through them as quickly as I can because there's no way I can tell an elaborate story for all of them because I, I just don't have the time for that. But anyways, guys, let's get into this. All right, guys, so here we go. 12 Angry Men, one of the best black and white films ever made. I absolutely love this film. It's amazing. 12 Monkeys, another fantastic overlooked film by Terry Gilliam. I absolutely love this film. Bruce Willis, Madeline Stowe, and Brad Pitt. 1, 2, 3, Punch is certainly really good. 21 Jump Street. I love this movie. It's one of my favorite comedies. Definitely one of those movies where when it came out, it was a huge sensation. 42. I absolutely love this film as well. Chadwick Boseman now playing Black Panther. It's great to have seen his career ascend. I absolutely love this film. 300. Definitely my favorite Zack Snyder movie and I think it still is his best movie. Act of Valor. I haven't seen this movie since I, I think 2012 this came out. Yeah, I haven't seen this movie since, so it might not be as good on rewatch, but I remember liking it the first time I saw it. Air Force One and In the Line of Fire, a double feature. Uh, Air Force One I thought was fine. I mean, of course it has the Get Off My Plane line by Harrison Ford. I mean, you can't beat that, but I thought the movie was okay. But In the Line of Fire is a terrific film. Clint Eastwood and John Malkovich playing the villain. Great casting. And I also own the limited edition Alfred Hitchcock Essentials Collection, including Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho, and The Birds. Uh, as you guys know, my two favorite movies by Hitchcock I can't choose is uh, North by Northwest and Psycho. I love those two movies so much. Rear Window, I rewatched it last semester for one of my film classes, and I, for some reason I still can't get into it. Ridley Scott's Alien. James Cameron's Alien is my personal favorite. And I do own Alien 3. I haven't seen this movie in years. I definitely need to give it another try because I did like it the first time, but I only saw the assembly cut. I've never seen the theatrical version of it, so I should definitely do that one day. Double feature including American History X and A History of Violence. I still have not seen American History X. I know, I know, I definitely plan on watching it this year. I think it also turns 20, so if I like it enough, I might do a special review for it. But A History of Violence is a fantastic film. American Made, honestly one of my favorites of last year. I really love this movie. I've seen it twice and I loved it just as much as I did the first time. American Psycho, I finally watched this movie actually on New Year's Day. So what a great way to start off 2018. But man guys, I love this movie. It's, it's so different from any movie I have ever seen in my life and I really just loved it for it. And Christian Bale, perfect as Patrick Bateman. You like Huey Lewis in the news? American Sniper, fantastic movie in my mind. A Nightmare on Elm Street, creepy film. Apocalypse Now and Apocalypse Now Redux. I have not seen the Redux version, but I have seen the theatrical one, great film. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. And Apollo 13, directed by Ron Howard, who took over Phil Lord and Chris Miller for the Han Solo movie, which I'm not really excited for, but uh, Ron Howard, I think this is his best movie in my opinion. Tom Hanks, Bill Paxton, may he rest in peace, and Kevin Bacon. Those three actors together, great. Next up is Arrival, directed by Denis Villeneuve, and you're going to hear that name a lot more during this video. But Arrival, fantastic movie, one of the best of 2016. Arthur Christmas, definitely childhood favorite. I remember when this came out, it was just so cool, and I still really enjoy watching every Christmas. The Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron. I cannot wait for Infinity War. I'm super pumped. Um, I actually like the first one more than the second one. I used to prefer Age of Ultron when it came out, but definitely the first one is the more superior film. Baby Driver, my favorite movie of 2017. I absolutely adore it. Edgar Wright, you're going to hear that name a lot more times throughout this video. 
But man, guys, I love this movie so much. I've seen it nine times, actually, and I would love to see it a tenth. The Back to the Future trilogy, definitely the movies that made me fall in love with the idea of time travel, and I absolutely adore this trilogy. I actually love part two the most, and I'm actually making a video on it right now. Bad Boys 1 and 2, definitely the guilty pleasure section of Michael Bay because I do think early Michael Bay is definitely his best years. Um, but this was only $5.99 at Best Buy, so I knew I had to pick this up because I, I enjoy these movies. They're dumb, stupid entertainment, but, you know, they got good charisma by Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Speaking of guilty pleasures, Battleship. Oh, man. <laughs> this is one of those movies that I just like. I... I it's totally, it's not good. It's not a good movie at all, but there's just something about it that makes it so entertaining. Okay, another collection. 1989's Batman. I love this movie. Batman Returns. Fun fact that I keep forgetting to share, this was actually the first Blu-ray I ever purchased. Uh, this was all the way back in 2010. I cannot believe it's been nearly eight years since I picked up this movie, but I still enjoy Batman Returns. Not as good as 89's Batman in my mind, but it's still pretty decent. Batman Begins. The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises, all in their exclusive steelbook editions. So happy to have this. And yes, I do own Batman v Superman. I don't think this is a terrible movie, but it's not a great one either. Beetlejuice, Michael Keaton, I absolutely love this movie. It's actually turning 30 this year, so who knows, come this Halloween, I might make a special 30th anniversary review of it. Big, this movie is also turning 30 this year, but I have been planning on reviewing it, so look forward to something coming this summer. The Big Lebowski, well that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> and The Big Sick, definitely one of my favorite movies of last year. I was very surprised just how much I liked it, but this movie was so sweet and charming and the cast was just great, I loved it. Black Hawk Down, excellent Ridley Scott movie. And speaking of Ridley Scott, the original Blade Runner, but this is the final cut. In my opinion, the best way to watch Blade Runner. I love the original and now I do have Blade Runner 2049. And with these two movies, uh, I personally enjoy the first one more. I've only seen 2049 once and that was in the theater. I didn't quite love it, but I definitely want to see it again because I've heard from people that a second viewing of this movie really makes a difference. The Blind Side, love this movie, so good. Blood Diamond, one of my all-time favorites. The Blues Brothers, we're on a mission from God. The Born Identity, Born Supremacy, and The Born Ultimatum, three excellent movies. I was so happy that I got to talk about them before Jason Bourne came out nearly two years ago. I can't believe it's been almost two years ago, but I definitely enjoyed reviewing these movies because they're a lot of fun. Boys in the Hood, one of my favorite movies of all time. I definitely need to make a video talking about this. I might do an analyze video. Who knows, I might do that. Braveheart, one word, freedom. The Breakfast Club, my favorite John Hughes movie. I've never quite understood because I know there's a few people out there who really hate this movie. I've never quite understood why. I think it's fantastic. Next up we have Captain America the First Avenger, Winter Soldier, and Civil War, the Captain America trilogy. Definitely three movies that I really enjoyed seeing in the theater. Uh, Winter Soldier is definitely, in my mind, the best MCU movie, but it's definitely my favorite cat movie of the three. I'm not really a huge fan of Civil War. I don't know, it's just, I think it's okay, but I do really enjoy the first Avenger. I saw it when it turned 12. Captain Phillips, fantastic movie. Carrie, the first Shout Factory Collector's Edition movie I own. I wanted to pick up Misery a couple weeks ago, but I felt the price was a little bit too high. But I definitely want to pick that one up soon because that'll be my second one. But Carrie, very good film. Definitely one of Brian De Palma's best. Tom Hanks, again in Castaway, fantastic movie. I mean, how can you not love it? And of course, this movie made you care about a volleyball. I know I say that every time I do a Blu-ray collection video, but this movie made you care about a volleyball. I mean, what other movie has ever done that? <laughs> Speaking of Tom Hanks, Catch Me If You Can, also starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Definitely not only one of Spielberg's most underrated films, but I think one of the most underrated movies ever. Charade, classic film, love it. Children of Men, Alfonso Cuaron directed the hell out of this movie. I love it. Close Encounters, the 40th anniversary edition. I finally have this movie on Blu-ray. So proud. Cloverfield and, of course, 10 Cloverfield Lane, my favorite movie of 2016. I love talking about this movie. Anyone who knows me personally or has been on my channel for a while absolutely knows that. 
But yeah, guys, uh, really good. I was so upset that Cloverfield 3 was such a disappointment. Next movie up is Collateral, my second favorite Michael Mann movie, second only to Heat. You'll hear me talk about that very soon. But this is an excellent movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Commando, so much fun. I mean, this is one of those movies that you can just pop in and enjoy 90 minutes of pure chaos and Arnold Schwarzenegger just being perfect in the role. Dark City, I haven't seen this movie in quite some time. I should definitely rewatch it considering the fact that it's turning 20 this year because I might want to do a special 20th anniversary review of it. The Day After Tomorrow, childhood favorite, definitely could be viewed as a guilty pleasure, but as a kid, I loved this movie. I watch this film with my mom all the time. We really love it. Uh, I still find it really fun to this day, and I think the special effects look pretty good. Deadpool, very, very excited for the sequel. I love the first movie, The Merc with the Mouth. Ryan Reynolds was perfect in the role. I cannot wait to see Cable. <laughs> Demolition Man, definitely a guilty pleasure, but a guilty pleasure that is so entertaining. Oh my god. This film is a non-stop riot from beginning to end. I love the opening scene so much, I won't spoil it, but that explosion, oh, one of the best ever. Speaking of heavy explosions, the Die Hard quadrilogy, including the first one, Die Hard 2, Die Harder, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and Live for Your Die Hard, Definitely four very entertaining films. Die Hard 4 is probably my least favorite of them, but I still really enjoy it. I actually think Die Hard with a Vengeance might be my personal favorite, but the first one I think is objectively the best. Don't Breathe, very creepy movie. Not for the faint of heart not whatsoever. Uh, Doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. This is one of the few Criterion films I own. I forgot to mention 12 Angry Men as a Criterion movie. But um, yeah, I love Doctor Strange. Love definitely one of the best Kubrick films, and this has a this has some really cool extras in it. Drive, the only Nicholas Winding Refn movie I own. I'm not really a fan of the other movies I've seen of his besides Bronson, but I definitely should get that soon. But Drive, I thought was pretty entertaining. Dunkirk, one of the best movies of 2017. Um, I was not the biggest fan of it around first go, but I saw it again and I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's a perfect movie in my mind. I do think it is kind of flawed at times. I don't like the multiple timelines thing. I just didn't really feel like it worked really well for the story, but uh, Christopher Nolan, you can't go wrong with that guy. Easy A, one of my favorite high school movies, so much fun. And speaking of high school movies, The Edge of Seventeen, one of my favorites of 2016, and also just one of the best high school movies I think ever made. It was so much fun. Haley Steinfeld, oh my god, she is so pretty. I don't know if you guys think that, but wow, I think she's really pretty. And Hayden Sato's character in the movie, he reminded me of me a lot. Edward Scissorhands, my favorite Tim Burton movie, as well as probably my favorite performance by Johnny Depp. Next up is Aaron Brockovich, directed by Steven Soderbergh. I think it's still my favorite movie of his. I love Julia Roberts' performance. Escape from New York. Definitely in the guilty pleasure realm for sure, but man, I love this movie. <laughs> E.T. The Extraterrestrial. I'm so glad I own this on Blu-ray because before, I think August, I didn't own E.T. on Blu-ray, and that was very surprising, but I finally own it. Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead. I definitely need to pick up Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness soon, but Evil Dead, super creepy movie, but it's one of those movies that, despite me not really loving it, I really appreciate the fact that every shot in the movie had significance to it. You really felt like they were trying to make the best movie they could. Next movie up is Fargo. I love this film. The Coen brothers are fantastic directors. It's my favorite of theirs besides No Country for Old Men, and we're going to talk about that soon. Really love this film. And next up, we come to the biggest Guilty Pleasure franchise in my mind of all time. Starting off with the first Fast and the Furious, my all-time favorite Guilty Pleasure movie. If this movie is on TV, I, I'm telling you, I feel so compelled to just sit there and watch it. I remember it came on over Christmas break. It was like maybe half an hour in, but I watched it till the very end because it just sucks me in. I love it. Oh man, I feel so guilty to say that, but it's just so much fun. And then Too Fast, Too Furious, my second favorite guilty pleasure movie of all time. As you can tell, I really enjoy these movies. <laughs> so dumb. Fast Five, I do think this one is the best out of them, but I'm saying the best in terms of the best made. 
because it's still a guilty pleasure movie, but it's still really fun. Fast 6, not as good as Fast 5, but I still really enjoy it. And it's also in a steelbook edition. And speaking of steelbooks, I own The Fates of the Furious, or Fast 8, also in a steelbook. Definitely a fun movie too, but man, these are all guilty pleasures for sure. The Fifth Element, super fun movie, loved watching it as a kid. Fight Club, not going to talk about it, we're just going to put that, because, you know, I, 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 don't wanna, I don't want anything being threatened. Uh, Forrest Gump, definitely one of my all-time favorite movies. I need to review this movie one day. It's just, it, I just have to. Tom Hanks' performance in it is perfect. <laughs> Harrison Ford in The Fugitive. This movie turns 25 this summer, and I am planning on doing a 25th anniversary review of the movie, so look forward to that coming this summer as well. Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket, fantastic war film. I love the first half of the movie more than the second half. I don't know if you guys think the same way, but the first half of this movie is just cinematic gold. The best drill sergeant I've ever seen in a film. Get Out, one of the best movies of 2017. I absolutely love this movie. I've seen it four times, and I'd love to see it a fifth. Ghostbusters, this is one of the few unpopular opinions I have, but I've never thought this movie was amazing. I think it's fine. It's definitely a fun movie to watch, but I've never looked at it and I thought, this is a true classic. I mean, it is in certain ways, but I think overall it's okay. The original Ghost in the Shell. I have not seen the remake with Scarlett Johansson. I definitely want to, even though I've heard people say it's really bad. I still do want to check it out, but I did enjoy the original. And I actually won this steelbook. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes did a giveaway last year, and I was lucky enough to win this, so proud. Next movie up is The Gift, one of my favorite movies of 2015. Loved it, and I still love it to this day. The original Godfather, I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Gone Girl, David Fincher movie, I thought this film was very good. It had a couple of issues in my mind. I feel like the cops in the movie were really stupid. But overall, David Fincher, that man can light anything. Oh my god. His cinematography in, in his movies is just breathtaking. Goodfellas, classic, gotta have it. So glad I finally owned it on Blu-ray. Good Time, one of the most uh, unconventional and best indie movies of last year. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Good Will Hunting, love this movie. It turned 20 at the end of last year. I apologize, I did not make a 20th anniversary review. But if you still would want me to talk about this movie, I'd be more than happy to. Gran Torino, I actually have not seen this movie yet. But I definitely will soon because I've heard... It's really good. The Grand Budapest Hotel, definitely one of my favorite Wes Anderson films, if not my favorite. I'm very excited for Isle of Dogs. Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, the first one I do think is the better movie, but Guardians Volume 2 I still thought was so much fun. I feel like at times it was just as good as the first movie, but... I do think the first film is definitely the most special. Hacksaw Ridge, one of the best war movies I have ever seen. I love this movie. The original Hangover, the only Hangover movie I would really consider Oni because the other two movies I thought were pretty bad. But this movie is really funny. The Hateful Eight, Quentin Tarantino film. That's not the last time you will hear me say that name. Heat, my favorite Michael Mann movie. Absolutely adore this film. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro deliver fantastic performances and this movie's suspense is amazing. And that shootout scene, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Oh my god, so good. Hello High Water, one of my favorite movies of 2016. I have only seen this movie once, hilariously, but I still remember just about all of it. I thought it was a very good story, and I loved Chris Pine in it. That was the first time that I really appreciated Chris Pine in the movie. Because <laughs> I was not really a fan of his before. Heathers, Winona Ryder and Christian Slater, fantastic performances in a movie that the first time I saw it, I did not like it really at all, but the second time, I thought it was really good. It's definitely one of those movies where my opinion like drastically changed the second time I saw it, and for the better. The original Hellboy, I do not own Hellboy 2. I honestly was not really a fan of it, but I really enjoyed the first movie. The Help, love this movie. I mean... This is one of the most uh, emotionally charged movies I've ever seen in my life, but I love it. Hidden Figures, one of the best movies of 2016 or 2017, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, but yeah, this movie is excellent. I love it. I own the Hobbit trilogy, including The Unexpected Journey, Desolation of Smog, and The Battle of the Five Armies. Home Alone 1 and Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. I really do enjoy the original two Home Alones. 
Home Alone 2 definitely copies the first one in a lot of ways, but I still really find it funny. And the traps in the movie are just so psychotic. I mean, Kevin McAllister is probably a, a murderer now. <laughs> Hot Fuzz, another film directed by Edgar Wright. I love this film so much. Definitely check out my review for it on my channel, as well as every other Edgar Wright movie. The Hunger Games Catching Fire, the only Hunger Games movie I have on Blu-ray. Definitely the best one of the franchise, in my opinion, although I have not watched any of the movies since the last one came out, I think in 2015. So it's been a little while, but I do remember this one being the best. The Hunt for Red October, um, I was not really a huge fan of this movie, despite everyone else I know loving it. I thought it was predictable, but, you know, overall, it's, it's entertaining, but, I mean, when you have Sean Connery in a movie, that usually compels me to watch it. Inception, one of the best Christopher Nolan movies, as well as, I think, one of the best directed movies of this decade, and just one of the best movies of the decade. It's totally a mind-bender, and I still love watching it to this day. Independence Day, I mean, this is a must-own for any American, for sure. Um, but yeah, I love Independence Day, just love it. The Indiana Jones Complete Adventures Collection. Uh, wow, this is really cool artwork. Raiders of the Lost Ark, which I love, of course. Temple of Doom, at times, I actually love this movie more than Raiders. Uh, the Last Crusade, I think it's probably still my favorite of all the Indiana Jones movies. And again, it's got Sean Connery in it. And there is Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This movie puts a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths, but when I saw it as a little kid, I didn't really think it was that bad, and I still don't think it's a train wreck. Starting off the third section, uh, Inglorious Bastards, directed by Quentin Tarantino, of course. This is not the last time you hear that name. Inglorious Bastards, definitely one of those movies that I didn't quite love the first time I saw it, but I loved it the second time. And it's just, it's a fantastic movie. It's very violent, but I think the opening scene of the film is still my favorite scene in the entire movie. Insomnia, probably my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie, but still, this is a very good movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely watch it, because I know people aren't as familiar with this movie as his other epics, but definitely watch it. And speaking of Christopher Nolan, Interstellar. This is one of those movies that has a lot of controversy for whatever reason, but I love it. I think the ending is fantastic. I know people think it's really stupid, but I love the ending. In Time, definitely a guilty pleasure. It Follows, very creepy movie. I didn't really find it extremely scary, as a lot of people told me, but the atmosphere of it is definitely creepy. Of course, Jaws, what film lover does not own this film? Absolute classic. Gotta have it. Gotta watch it every summer. The first John Wick, I don't own John Wick Volume 2 because, or Chapter 2, I think. Because I wasn't really a fan of it, but I do love the first movie. And that nightclub scene, oh yeah. I mean, I watch this. I would watch this movie specifically for the nightclub scene, but it's fantastic. I love Keanu. I loved him in the second movie, but I just wasn't really a fan of it overall. Joyride, one of the most overlooked films of all time. I encourage you, if you haven't seen it, to watch it. It is so good. The original Jurassic Park. I might want to talk about the other films in preparation for the second Jurassic World movie, even though I'm not really excited for it. I think it's going to be bad, but I'm still going to see it anyway type of movie. Um, but I definitely should talk about it. And this movie turns 25 this year, which is amazing. My brother must feel really old. <laughs> uh, Kill Bill Volume 1. I will get Volume 2 very soon. I hear it is only $5.99 at Best Buy, so next time I head over there, I'll try to pick that up. Uh, but Kill Bill Volume 1, fun movie by Quentin Tarantino, not a masterpiece in my opinion, but it's definitely his popcorn type film. King Kong, the 2005 version, in my opinion, the best version. Um, I love the original 1933 one. Um, the 1976 one is not really that good, but this movie is awesome. It's one of the first PG-13 movies I ever saw, so it kind of has that special childhood meaning to me, but I love it. Kingsman, The Secret Service, and Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Uh, I do love the first Kingsman, um, but I do really enjoy the second one. I've seen it twice, and I still f I still think it's a lot of fun. La La Land, wonderful movie. I just, I love this film so much the first time I saw it. The second time, not as much, but I still think it's just a truly beautiful movie. L.A. Confidential. La Femme Nikita, fantastic foreign film, love it. Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai, one of the most underrated movies I think of all time. Leon the Professional, 
excellent movie by Luc Besson, who also directed The Fifth Element. I should definitely talk about this movie one day. The Lethal Weapon Collection, I love the first film. Second movie is not as good, but I still really enjoy it. Three and four are okay in my mind. Limitless. Haven't seen this movie in years. <laughs> Lincoln, Daniel Day-Lewis's, I think, second to last performance because Phantom Thread is now his last one, but uh, I haven't seen this movie in quite some time because it doesn't really have a lot of replay value, to be completely honest, but it's still pretty good. Edge of Tomorrow or Live, Die, Repeat. I think it's called Live, Die, Repeat now. That's why I have it in the L section. Whatever. I, I like to call it Edge of Tomorrow, but this is, this is I consider, the movie that made me rethink about how trailers are made because the trailers for this movie made me think it was going to be awful but I've loved it so usually when I try to judge a trailer I think this could be the edge of tomorrow of something Logan one of the best films of 2017 just in general and one of the best superhero movies made this decade Looper excellent movie until the last five minutes which I thought were terrible and made no sense the Lord of the Rings original trilogy, definitely some of the best movies ever made in my opinion, and definitely the best fantasy trilogy of all time. The Mad Max trilogy and Mad Max Fury Road. I cannot believe Fury Road is three years old. That's insane. But uh, the Mad Max trilogy definitely pioneered exploitation action films, and Fury Road is the movie that I think everyone has seen or should see. Next movie is The Magnificent Seven. I really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was one of the most... Overlooked movies in 2016, really enjoyable. Man of Steel, I cannot believe this movie is five years old this year. It's half a decade. I remember seeing this movie the day I graduated eighth grade. The Martian, my favorite film of 2015, love it. I still love it to this day. I watch it with my mom who also really loves it. I think she loves it more than me. <laughs> I own two copies of The Matrix. One of them is a steelbook I got as a present. And the other one I got, I think back in 2009. Memento, one of the best movies ever made. I adore this film. I love it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Christopher Nolan, again, just this is a masterpiece of a film. Men in Black 3, definitely my favorite of the Men in Black trilogy because I've never really been a big fan of this series, but I enjoyed the third movie. Minority Report, excellent film by Steven Spielberg. I also think it's pretty underrated. I love Tom Cruise's performance. And speaking of Tom Cruise, MI1, Mission Impossible 2, MI3, and Ghost Protocol. I do not own Rogue Nation because I honestly was not really a fan of that movie. But I do plan on rewatching and reviewing every single Mission Impossible film for MI6 coming out this summer. I am very excited for that. The trailer looks incredible, so hopefully it's going to be good. Moonlight, the best picture winner of 2016. I've only seen this movie once, and I loved this movie until the third act. I felt the third act was very disappointing. It just didn't live up to act one and act two, but I definitely want to rewatch it because I feel like I might love it more this time. And The Mummy, super fun movie. Some people think it's a guilty pleasure movie, some people think it's bad, but... Man, I really enjoy this movie. It has so much going for it. It's got action, adventure, comedy, horror, fantasy, romance. It's got all of the genres really well interwoven into a really fun story. I really enjoy The Mummy. Next movie up is The Nice Guy. Super fun movie directed by Shane Black. I had such a good time watching this movie. I've seen it quite a few times since it came out in theaters. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. No Country for Old Men, one of my favorite movies of all time. I absolutely love it. Love this film. I do think it's the best Coen Brothers movie. Uh, Fargo is my second favorite, um, but this movie is just so amazing. It's bleak as all hell, but that's definitely one of the reasons why I love it. And Javier Bardem, who oh, man, <laughs> so good. Nonstop, super fun movie. I really do enjoy this film. This was definitely during my early teenage Liam Neeson obsession phase where I just watched all of his movies and I loved them because it was with Liam Neeson. Uh, but still, I do think Nonstop is one of his best. I really do enjoy this movie. It's stupid, but it's really fun. Oblivion. The Patriot. <laughs> Patriot's Day. Patriot Games in its Steelbook Edition. And the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Super fun movie. I cannot believe it's now 15 years old this year. That makes me feel old. The original Planet of the Apes. This movie turns 50 come April. 
And when I get out of semester two for college, I will be talking about this film in celebration of its 50th anniversary. I cannot wait to talk about it because I love this movie, and you'll find out exactly why when I review it. Platoon, excellent movie. Predator, you're one ugly motherfucker. The Prestige, directed by Christopher Nolan, once again, great film. The Princess Bride, fencing, fighting, true love. Is this a kissing book? <laughs> and Prisoners. Definitely, this film is directed by Denis Villeneuve, first of all, but this is definitely one of the most emotionally impactful movies I've ever seen. I'll never forget the first time I watched it, and there are times where I wish I really could go back to the first time I saw it because I love this movie. It also turns five years old this year. That's really terrifying, but... I really want to talk about this movie this year. I really do. Prometheus. A lot of people hate this movie, but I'm one of the people who really enjoy it. I think it's very good. It's way better than Alien Covenant, which was just a crap pile. I do own Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho just solely on its regular Blu-ray because I bought it before I was given uh, the Alfred Hitchcock collection. But yeah, guys, I love Psycho. It's definitely my favorite horror movie. Pulp Fiction, in my opinion, Quentin Tarantino's best movie. Gotta have it. Royale with cheese. <laughs> Raging Bull, definitely one of the best films, especially one of the best performances ever delivered by Robert De Niro. Real Steel, very impactful when this came out. I loved it. I This is one of the few movies I saw twice in theaters because I loved it so much. I really wish they made a sequel. I have no idea why they didn't because I really enjoyed the first movie. Reservoir Dogs, another Quentin Tarantino film, my second favorite movie of his. And The Revenant. I have not seen this movie since the theater. I've watched bits and pieces of it, but I have not seen the entire movie since it came out in early 2016. But, guys, I remember every minute of it. It was so impactful. Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and War for the Planet of the Apes. This is one of the best trilogies ever made, in my opinion, and... I just feel so blessed that I was able to see all three of these movies in theaters because it's truly been an adventure and I, I, I really am just proud because all of these movies are good. Robocop, Dead or Alive, You're Coming With Me. The Rock, in my opinion, Michael Bay's best movie and I think it's his only genuinely really good movie because I love it. It's such a fun film. Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage and Ed Harris is the villain. And you can't go wrong there. Sylvester Stallone's Rocky. I mean, it really is his movie. And it's very impressive to see just how much of Stallone was put into that character. It really is his thing. And I love the original Rocky. It's definitely the best of all the movies made so far. And it's an absolute classic. The Rush Hour Trilogy. Three of the most entertaining movies out there in my opinion. The first movie is turning 20 this year, which is amazing. But I will be talking about it for its 20th anniversary. Safe House. Haven't seen this movie in years. Might not hold up as well, but I liked it when I first watched it. The Sandlot. Oh my god. I mean, this is undoubtedly a childhood classic. It's so good. And also, it turns 25 this year. Might be a review coming this summer. Saving Private Ryan. This movie turns 20 this year. There's a lot of cool anniversaries this year. So I might be talking about this one too, but I do think it is the best war movie I've ever seen. Scarface, say hello to my little friend in this really awesome steelbook edition. Look at that bad assery. The School of Rock, this movie turns 15 years old this year, and I will be talking about it. I have been waiting to review this movie for quite some time, and I'm so excited to share my thoughts on one of my personal favorite movies of all time. Another Edgar Wright film, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, out of all of his movies, I do think this one is my least favorite. However, it has Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And that is all I need to see a movie. But, I mean, oh my god, I love that woman so much. Yeah, but this movie is still great. Like, it's my least favorite, but it's by a very small percentile. The original Scream, classic, gotta have it, love it. A triple feature including The Searchers, The Wild Bunch, and How the West Was Won. I finally saw The Wild Bunch with my dad over Christmas break, and I thought it was okay. When every character in the movie is a jackass, it's kind of hard to really root for anyone and to really care about the story, because it was just, to me, it was way too long. 
but the action in the movie was quite surprising at times. There was a lot of quick cut editing. Another triple feature, including Seven, Insomnia, and The Devil's Advocate. Um, Seven is a truly amazing film. I love it. It's probably it's probably my favorite David Fincher movie. I've seen it twice so far, and it's not one of those movies that you want to watch every other week, but I love it. It's truly amazing. Shaun of the Dead, another Edgar Wright film, and I do think in a few years this movie will be regarded as a true classic. I know it's almost 15 years old, but I think movies should wait until they're maybe 20 years old to be considered a classic, but Shaun of the Dead is so good. The Shawshank Redemption, classic, my second favorite movie of all time. I mean, how can you not love this movie? Especially with Morgan Freeman's amazing voice. I mean, he is just the voice of God, undoubtedly, and the best narrator voice of all time. The Shining, here's Johnny. Love this movie. My Probably my favorite Stanley Kubrick movie. Double feature including Shutter Island and The Aviator. I enjoy The Aviator, but man, Shutter Island. I love that film. I still think to this day it's one of the most overlooked and underrated films ever made. And it's by Martin Scorsese, so I, I have no idea why it's so underrated, but it's really good. Sicario, another Denis Villeneuve film. I'm very excited for the sequel. M. Night Shyamalan's Signs. This is a problematic movie for sure, but I still do enjoy it. I know a lot of people hate it, but I think it's, I think it's pretty good. The Silence of the Lambs. I finally saw this movie for the first time ever last month. I thought it was a bit overhyped. I still really liked it. It was still a very good movie, but I wouldn't say it was a perfect 10 out of 10 for me. The Sixth Sense, M. Night Shyamalan's first, and in my opinion, still his best movie. I love it. Skyfall, my favorite Bond movie, and you know what? I'm just going to put this one aside the because that's crap. But yeah, I love Skyfall. One of my favorite theatrical experiences of all time. And I still, to this day, think it's my favorite Bond movie. I've seen all the Bond films, and I can't wait for the next one. And I might be talking about all the Bond films. I'm planning on doing that. And speaking of Bond, I have the complete James Bond 007 collection on Blu-ray. One of my most prized possessions of all time, as well as having all the books. All the books you see up here are every Ian Fleming 007 book. Clearly, I'm a James Bond fan for sure, but I'd like to do the challenge and talk about every Bond film. So comment below if you'd like to see that. Snowpiercer, I love this movie until the last 15 to 20 minutes, which I just felt became a very cliche, weak story. But before that, it's a masterpiece. I love this movie. I couldn't believe they accomplished it, but they did. The Social Network, now this, this is one of my favorite movies ever. I think it's also one of the best written films just ever. Aaron Sorkin's screenplay for this movie is perfect. I mean, it's amazing how fast this movie goes, and it's amazing just how well written it is. So good. The Sorcerer's Apprentice, childhood favorite, really enjoy it. Still, tons of nostalgia, but it's enjoyable. Source Code, another one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, definitely check out my Analyze review of it. It just surpassed 2,000 views a couple weeks ago. So proud of it. Spaceballs, my favorite comedy of all time. Spaceballs the doll. Me. May the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> oh my god, this movie makes me laugh so hard every time. The Spider-Man Trilogy, as well as Spider-Man Homecoming. Homecoming was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this movie, and I have a special Blu-ray for it. It contains a comic book in it, too. But the original Spider-Man Trilogy was just, and still is, so integral. It was so integral to my childhood, but these movies still live with me today, and I feel like they always will. Split, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. This is definitely the movie that proved that he could be really coming back. I'm hoping Glass is going to be really good, and if it is, then I think he's back. Spotlight, one of the most emotional films I have ever seen. This movie broke me. Spy, such a fun movie. I haven't even opened it yet, but I have seen it. It's it's probably my favorite Paul Feig movie. Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. My parents bought those movies. They're Star Trek fans. I'm not. For obvious reasons, coming up in a couple seconds. The Star Wars Complete Saga. I would not be here talking to you guys about movies and such if it wasn't for Star Wars. I would not be a film major at Hofstra University if it wasn't for Star Wars. Th these movies are so important to me. The original trilogy I'm talking about. The prequels, look, 
as a kid, I enjoyed the prequels. I will admit that. I enjoyed them when I was younger. I still do enjoy Revenge of the Sith, but the first two movies are not really that good. But the original trilogy, I mean, where would I be without them, right? <laughs> I also own The Force Awakens and Rogue One. Um, the Force Awakens is one of those movies I have very, you know, differing opinions on depending on the time of the year. <laughs> sometimes I love this movie, sometimes I really don't. Um, but rewatching it in preparation for The Last Jedi, I loved it again. Rogue One, super fun movie. The ending, though. Oh my god, the ending is so good. And I will be getting The Last Jedi when it comes out March 27th, because despite flaws, I really do enjoy it. Next up is the Steven Spielberg collection. I love what he says on the back. I dream for a living, because that reminds me of me. Straight Outta Compton, definitely one of the best movies of 2015. So important, representation matters. And I thought the story was just fantastic. The fact that, you know, it's, it's real. And the fact that they used that music to, you know, talk about their lives. It, it really just meant a lot. Taken. This movie actually turns 10 years old this year. What? Yeah, but this was definitely the start of my early teenage Liam Neeson crazed phase. Because I loved the first Taken. I still do to this day. But I mean, not as much as I did back in 2013. Taxi Driver in its 40th anniversary edition. Very glad to own this film. Robert De Niro's performance is amazing. You talking to me? The Terminator. Love it so much. My all-time favorite movie, Terminator 2 Judgment Day in its exclusive Steelbook edition. So proud to own this. I also own Terminator 3. It has its moments. I'm going to say it has some moments that I really enjoyed. But overall, it's really okay. But it was only $5 at Best Buy, so I was like, why not? The Adventures of Tintin. It's okay. I don't know why they never made a sequel. I, I still think they are, but it's probably stuck in development hell. But it was fine. The Thin Red Line, also turning 20 this year. I might do a review on it. And again, another Criterion Collection movie. Very proud. John Carpenter's The Thing. At one time, the scariest movie I had ever seen. I still think it's one of the scariest movies of all time. But I definitely overcame my fear last year. And I was very happy. Fear year that rhymed. But yeah, I love this movie. Classic. Gotta have it, especially for horror fans. I also have Thor The Dark World. This movie is mainly for my mother because uh, she loves Chris Hemsworth, like adores him. Titanic. I love this movie. I do. I, I just love it, man. <laughs> Top Gun. You know, definitely 80s, you know, cheesy, guilty pleasure, but still, you know, it's a fun movie. The original Total Recall, I used to own the Total Recall remake, but I sold it a couple years ago. But the original Total Recall is one of Schwarzenegger's best movies. It's one of my personal favorite movies of the 90s. Training Day, fantastic movie, gotta have it. Unbreakable, while I think The Sixth Sense is the best M. Night Shyamalan movie, Unbreakable is my favorite. And it's one of those movies that I've really come to love. The first time I saw it, I thought it was just okay. But I really feel like every time I've seen this movie, I've loved it more and more. So it's just a really special experience for me. Unbroken in its steelbook edition. I haven't seen this movie in quite some time, but I still really like it. Unforgiven. This is one of those movies I was lucky enough to see in the theater. They did a 25th anniversary re-release of it last year. So it was really cool to see it at the movies. Alright guys, we're down to the last row. Starting with Unknown, another Liam Neeson movie during my Liam Neeson craze early teenage phase. Uh, but yes, Unknown is, I think, a pretty underrated movie. It's not amazing or anything, but I don't think a lot of people have seen this movie, and I would recommend it because it's actually pretty decent. The Untouchables, one of my favorite movies of all time. Also, check out my Analyze review talking about the train station sequence on my Manalyze section. The Usual Suspects, Kevin Spacey, yeah, I know, I know. But it's still an amazing film. It's always the best to separate you know, the actor's performance from the person in real life. But yes, I love The Usual Suspects. It's an absolute classic, and it has one of the best endings ever. War Games. This movie was given to me by my friend Eric. And again, thank you very much, Eric. That was very nice of you. Also, this movie is turning 35 years old this summer, and... This will be another review. I, I plan on talking about quite a lot of films this summer, quite a lot of older films, and this is definitely one of them. That's one of my goals this year, is to talk about older films, not like really old ones, but definitely classics that I own on Blu-ray, and War Games is certainly one of them. I love this movie. West Side Story, my favorite musical. The World's End. I still think it's my favorite Edgar Wright movie. 
this film was just so impactful to me when it came out. It, it's like one of those movies that came out at the right place at the right time. And I love this film. I mean, honestly, you could not stop me talking about this in 2014. It was this and Captain America the Winter Soldier. I talked about those two movies so much that year. Whiplash. Love this movie. I do think it's one of my all-time favorites. I, I, I really just think it's an excellent film from beginning to end, but the ending, oh my god, the ending to this movie, guys, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, please watch the movie and just wait for that end. Wonder Woman, definitely regarded as one of the best movies of 2017. I thought the movie was overall solid. I didn't think it was amazing, the movie. I didn't think the movie was amazing, but Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman is perfect casting, and she really does prove as an inspiration for young girls and women out there to be strong and confident, and I feel like that aspect of the movie is great. It's just, overall, I think it's fine. I don't think it's amazing. World War Z, the sequel's coming out next year, and it's directed by David Fincher. He's finally working with Brad Pitt after Fight Club. I'm not gonna talk about that movie that much. Uh, it's amazing, but I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, the first World War Z, I really do like this movie. Until Tank Cloverfield Lane, it was the only like horror-esque movie that I saw in the theater. So it was kind of a special experience. I also can't believe this movie's five years old this year, which is insane. But yeah, I did like this movie. X-Men 2, X-Men United, my favorite X-Men movie. X-Men First Class, definitely my favorite of the newer X-Men movies. The Wolverine, my second favorite of the Wolverine movies. Logan's definitely the best one, obviously. And I own X-Men Apocalypse in its Steelbook edition. This is a really awesome Steelbook. And I really enjoyed this movie the first time I saw it. The second and third time, I still enjoyed it, but not nearly as much. However, I don't hate this movie like some people do. And last, but not least, Zootopia. Definitely one of the most entertaining movies of 2016, and one of the few uh, Disney movies that I own on Blu-ray. I definitely need to own some more, but they are mad expensive, guys. But I really enjoyed Zootopia, and it's a lot of fun. Alright guys, and there you have it. That was my sixth official Blu-ray collection video. I thank you all so much for watching. I always enjoy making these videos because like I said at the beginning of it, you guys love them. You love watching them. They get tons of views and I'm very proud to be making all of these. I can't wait to make my next one come August, so definitely look forward to that. Anyways guys, you really are the best. Thank you so much as always for watching. I really love it and stay tuned. <laughs>